in its renal physiology, we have already dealt with kidney, its functional anatomy, role in homeostasis and the functions. Then nephrons, its structure and difference between cortical and dextroglomerular nephrons. Now we will move on to the new topic, dextroglomerular apparatus. This topic includes the definition, structure and functions of dextroglomerular apparatus. The term dextra means near and so dextroglomerular means near or next to the glomerulus. Thus, dextroglomerular apparatus is a specialized organ situated near the glomerulus of each nephron. The thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle passes in between the afferent and afferent arteriole of its own glomerulus. In doing so, it comes very close to the afferent arteriole. Here, some structural modifications occur in the tubule and afferent and afferent arterioles. The entire modified structure, that is both tubular and vascular components, and the cells between them is called dextroglomerular apparatus. Dextroglomerular apparatus is formed by three different structures, macular densa, extraglomerular mesangial cells, and dextroglomerular cells. Before opening to the distal convoluted tubule, the lining epithelial cells of the thick ascending limb of the loop of Henle show some histological peculiarities. And these modified epithelial cells of the thick ascending limb constitute the macula densa. And it is situated between the afferent and efferent arterioles of the same nephron lying closer to the afferent arteriole. Since it is formed by the tightly packed cuboidal epithelial cells, it gives a dense appearance and hence the term macula densa. This macula densa acts as the sensor which monitors the change in ionic composition and rate of flow of the tubular fluid. Thus, it provides appropriate feedback signal to the renal corpuscle to change the rate of filtration as and when needed. So, it is having an important uh, role in the tubular glomerular feedback circuit. The mesangial cells present outside the glomerulus are called by the term extraglomerular mesangial cells. They are situated in the triangular space formed by afferent and efferent arterioles and the macula densa. They are also known as agranular cells or lasis cells. They secrete prostaglandin, cytokines and some amount of renin and erythropoietin. Glomerular mesangial cells are the mesangial cells lying inside the glomerulus in between the glomerular capillaries. Hence, they are also known as intraglomerular mesangial cells. They support the glomerular capillary loops by surrounding the capillaries in the form of a cellular network. They are having an important role in regulating the glomerular filtration by their contractile property. They are phagocytic in nature and secrete glomerular interstitial matrix, prostaglandins and cytokines. The area where thick ascending limb of loop of Henle comes in close contact with the afferent arterioles. There, the tunica media of the afferent arteriole have myoepithelial cells containing granules. And these cells are called as dextroglomerular cells or JG cells. These granules contain the enzyme renin which activates the renin-angiotensin system. The dextroglomerular cells form a thick cuff around the afferent arteriole before entering the capsule and it is called as polar cushion or polkison. The important function of dextroglomerular apparatus is the secretion of hormones and other substances. It also helps in the regulation of glomerular blood flow and glomerular filtration rate. Of these, the first function is secretion of hormones. The most important hormone secreted by this apparatus is renin by the dextroglomerular cells and prostaglandins by the extraglomerular mesangial cells. 
Renin activates the renin angiotensin system, which is essential for regulation of ECF volume, blood volume, and blood pressure. The blood volume and blood pressure are affected by sympathetic activity, circulating catecholamines, and ADH, whereas ECF volume is related with the plasma electrolyte concentration, especially sodium chloride and potassium ions. Therefore, any alteration in these factors will result in the alteration of secretion of renin too. So the stimulants of renin secretion can be summarized as a reduced BP, blood volume, ECF volume, a reduced load of sodium and chloride in the macula densa, and an increased load of potassium ions and increased sympathetic activity etc and the reverse of these will result in a decreased renin secretion some of the conditions where renin secretion is high are cardiac failure standing liver cirrhosis psychological depression dehydration hypertension hyponatremia hyperkalemia etc already told Renin activates the renin angiotensin system, which is very essential for the maintenance of blood pressure. So, what this renin angiotensin system is and how does it work? Angiotensinogen is a glycoprotein synthesized in liver. When renin is released into the blood, it acts on its substrate angiotensinogen and converts it into angiotensin 1. This angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by the angiotensin converting enzyme mainly secreted from the blood vessels of lungs and hence most of the conversion of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2 takes place in the lungs angiotensin 2 has a short half-life of one to two minutes as it is rapidly metabolized and converted to form the angiotensin 3 by angiotensinases present in the RBCs and vascular buds in tissues. Likewise, angiotensin 3 is converted into angiotensin 4. How these angiotensins act? Angiotensin 1 is a physiologically inactive form that acts as the precursor for the formation of angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is the most important among all angiotensins. All of its actions are aimed at increasing the blood volume and blood pressure. It is having action on various sites. First, the action on blood vessels. Angiotensin 2 increases arterial blood pressure by directly acting on the blood vessels causing vasoconstriction and indirectly by increasing the secretion of noradrenaline which is a general vasoconstrictor. Next is its action on adrenal cortex. Angiotensin 2 stimulates the secretion of aldosterone from adrenal cortex, which helps in the retention of sodium in the renal tubules, thereby increasing the blood pressure. Action of angiotensin 2 on kidney. It regulates the glomerular filtration rate by constricting efferent arterioles and by contracting glomerular mesangial cells. Both help in the reduction of glomerular filtration rate thereby increasing the blood volume and this angiotensin 2 also helps in the increased reabsorption of sodium from the renal tubules these are all the peripheral actions of angiotensin 2 now the central action of angiotensin 2 that is its action on brain it inhibits the baroreceptor reflex and this baroreceptor reflex is responsible for reducing the BP. So inhibition of baroreceptor reflex uh, indirectly helps in the increase of BP. Angiotensin 2 also increases the water intake by stimulating thirst centers, increases the secretion of corticotropin releasing hormones from the hypothalamus, and adrenocorticotropic hormone release from the pituitary. Again, it increases the secretion of antidiuretic hormone from the hypothalamus. 
Angiotensin 3 also increases blood pressure and uh, stimulates aldosterone secretion, uh, but it is having only 40% of the vasopressor activity of angiotensin 2, whereas it has 100% of aldosterone secreting activity. And angiotensin 4 is a recently discovered one having some biological activities in the brain and it is believed to stimulate the vasomotor center. The importance of renin angiotensin system. This RAS is implicated in the genesis of hypertension. Uh, renin increases angiotensin formation which causes intense vasoconstriction that in turn increases the blood pressure. So whenever the renin secretion is high, it invariably increases the BP. And this is the important physiological basis of renal hypertension. In the treatment of hypertension, the drugs that inhibit ACE, that is ACE blockers, are found to be very effective in controlling BP when compared to other groups of drugs. Now, the second important function of juxtaglomerular apparatus is the secretion of substances like uh, cytokines, that is interleukins 2 and tumor necrosis factor by the extraglomerular mesangial cells and uh, thromboxane A2 by the macula densa. The next important function of juxtaglomerular apparatus is the regulation of glomerular blood flow and the glomerular filtration rate. We have discussed earlier that macula densa acts as the sensor which detects the change in the rate and volume of blood flow in the tubules and the tubular fluid composition. This provides feedback signal to the glomerulus to change the rate of filtration which forms the physiological basis of tubular glomerular feedback and thus they control the glomerular filtration.